the fourth and final installment of the Hotel Transylvania franchise premiered on Amazon Prime Friday, so this review is a little bit late, but I'm here to talk about Hotel Transylvania Transformia. Please know that everything that I will say in this video is just my very own opinion. My name is S Dub Nation. If you are new to the channel and you are free to comment down below, what did you think of Hotel Transylvania Transformia? If you have seen it, like, comment, and subscribe. Please don't forget to check out that Twitter that's going to pop up on your screen right now. And also, welcome newcomers to the channel. This is the first review for 2022 here in the channel. And yeah, let's just get right into the review. For centuries, no human has had the power to become a monster. Until now. But is it safe, though? Let's find out. <laughs> is everything okay down here? Hey, Drac, what's up? Since 2012, for 10 years, I have been following this franchise, Hotel Transylvania. I've watched every film, not in the theater, but I've seen every film, and I practically grew up with this franchise. So let's move right on into the good. And the good thing that comes to mind here is that the animation in this film is just as bouncy, fast and fluid as the previous three the franchise up to this point knows how to sell tickets until you know they put it on amazon prime and knows how to appeal to the broadest audience as possible and i think that's their biggest positive the fact that going into the film i never expected too much because i knew exactly what i was going to get Another lighthearted film, another lightweighted film that has a fast paced story that just moves everything very quickly, has a life lesson for Dracula in the end, and then we all learn to accept both monsters and humans living together and have it all centralized around this hotel that offers both monsters and humans now. The story, like I said before, is very fast paced, and the frequent action based gags will keep the kids somewhat entertained. The plot and the conflict in the film is actually pretty fun. For me, I thought the whole Freaky Friday thing is a great concept, and I think that works inside of this movie. I mean, if you, you have nothing else to do, you've done a summer vacation, you've done the baby coming into, like, you, you've done Drat becoming a grandfather, you've done, you know, the the teenager wanting to live a life outside of the hotel. You've done all of those other storylines, you can do something new, a Freaky Friday idea, switching the places between humans and monsters and then vice versa. I think that works. There's a certain nuance to it. And seeing Dracula as a human and Johnny as a monster, inherently, that's fun and interesting to me. Hotel Transylvania keeps the characters and everything that worked before in the franchise. But something seemed very off with this film. Great ideas, great concept. Not the best execution. With that being said, let's move right into the bad. And the bad thing that comes to mind here is that this whole final installment, as they're calling it, felt very off. Maybe it was the fact that it was on Amazon Prime and wasn't in theaters, so it didn't have a big of a splash. Or maybe the fact that the story was literally retconning everything about the films before. Or maybe the fact that the original voice cast didn't even show up. I mean, we obviously have David Spade and Michael Buschetti. And then we also have Selena Gomez and Adam Sandler. And some of the other voice casts from the other movies. But the prime one, Adam Sandler, is not here. But in the film, I will put this in the mixed category if I had a mixed category. In the film... You really don't recognize it. You don't recognize that Kevin James isn't there. You don't recognize that Adam Sandler isn't there. But something felt off, and that was the fact that it didn't have the same vibe or the same tone as the first three films. And I kind of felt, even in the third film, that they were moving slowly away from the tone of even the first film. I think that this one clearly shows that Dracula is low-key a racist. And I'm not saying that being a racist is fine. Like, please don't be a racist. It, for me, I'm I'm black. Don't be a racist. <laughs> like, don't do like please, like, don't don't be a racist. But like I'm about to say, it's fine. Not that he's a racist. It's fine because he as a character learns to trust humans. He learns to not become a racist anymore. And it literally makes no sense 
why he acts the way he does inside of this film towards Johnny because in the first film Johnny marries his daughter in the second film he helps birth Drac a grandchild and in the third film he helps Drac find his true love in a human and makes the hotel a place for both humans and monsters to live. The trilogy worked just fine as it was but this film felt very unexpiring and kind of lifeless. The gags most of the time they didn't hit. When I was watching it I fell asleep two times. I had to cut rewinding it back because I fell asleep two times and I in some cases I felt bored. I, I really kind of felt a little bit bored there. In conclusion, Hotel Transylvania for Transformia was a disappointment slash mixed bag for me. I would go either or any type of day. Today I'm going to go with a disappointment. Only because it was what I expected from a Hotel Transylvania film, but also everything I feared. This film felt like a distant cousin to the actual trilogy, the actual franchise of the films that I grew up with since 2012 the films that I've been following since 2012 and maybe it's because I have not rewatched these films again maybe I'm gonna have to go I'm gonna have to go rewatch these movies again but for me what was once an enjoyable franchise with Adam Sandler and his friend is doing the voices of these monsters these recognizable monsters and it having an actual story and Drac learning to accept humans again and learning to grow as a character finding love finding love in his grandchild kindling his relationship with his father even though they're not great movies they're not cinema i still found them to be pretty enjoyable and actually pretty watchable but this film just turned into a finale that felt like a direct to dvd sequel that didn't even stick the landing i'm gonna have to give Hotel Transylvania, Transformia, a 5.7 out of 10. And I would say skip it. The franchise should have just stopped at 3. The Hotel Transylvania trilogy is a good set of films. Transformia, I didn't really like it. So much for the first review of 2022. All right, guys, that is it for the review. Please know that everything that I did say in this video was just my very own opinion, and you're free to comment down below. What did you think of Hotel Transylvania 4 Transformia? Did you see it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Comment down all of that below. Please don't forget to check out that Twitter that's going to pop up on your screen right now, and also don't forget to come back in the future for the Hotel Transylvania films ranked. With that being said, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.